Hello everyone. Jesus cured many people of their diseases and illnesses. Some people sought Jesus to go to their homes and lay his hands on sick people. Some brought the sick to him and begged him to heal them. Some others called out to Jesus as he passed by, Son of David, or Jesus, Master, or Lord, have mercy on us. The blind man in today's gospel story neither cried to Jesus for help nor was brought to Jesus. He was simply sitting by the roadside. He could not even see Jesus as he was blind. But Jesus saw him and stopped. He recognized that the man was in need of both physical sight and spiritual insight. Jesus never passed by sick people without healing them. His disciples, as always, were curious as to what Jesus would say or do. They asked Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Friends, they might have raised such a question many times, and which has in various times stared our minds too. They assumed that the man's blindness was the result of sin. They wanted Jesus to identify the cause and show the connection between his blindness and sin. Jesus, as was his style all throughout his ministry, gave an unexpected answer, and in the process made them understand his mission. He replied, Neither he nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Friends, Jesus' reply does not mean that God had inflicted blindness upon the man so he could later heal him. No, God takes what has happened and turns it into good. Friends, it is clear in the scriptures that some suffering and afflictions do come as a result of sin. For instance, once Jesus saw a man whom he had healed and admonished him not to sin again. We don't know what his sin was. There is no mention of the man's sin in the text. But Jesus said to him, Now you are well, do not sin any more, so that something worse doesn't happen to you. King David recognized that his sin was the cause of his physical, emotional and social suffering. He confessed his sins and pleaded for mercy. O Lord, do not rebuke me in anger or discipline me in your wrath. Whereas Job's afflictions were not the result of sin, even though his friends were insistent that his sin was the cause. Job was a just and devout man and yet found himself suffering intensely and deeply. It does not mean that Job was sinless, for the Bible tells us clearly that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Friends, Job's story helps us only to have an understanding of suffering and to respond to it in a godly way. As for the blind man, Jesus' answer made it clear that his affliction was neither because of his sin nor others' sin, but because God had a more meaningful purpose for it so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Jesus then spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and put it on the man's eyes and told him to go to a pool and wash himself. We might ask why Jesus used saliva and mud to cure the man. Some might think that the use of saliva was pretty gross. As a matter of fact, Jesus healed people in various ways and sometimes in stages. He sometimes just laid his hands on people, put his fingers into deaf ears, and at other times he just gave a command to heal or cast out a demon. So we can see there is no fixed pattern or form in how Jesus carried out his healing ministry. He could have healed the blind man just by touching his eyes, but he used his saliva and clay on this occasion. In fact, Jesus used saliva in two additional healings of a dumb man and another blind man. Friends, 
There is no clear understanding as to why Jesus chose to heal in this way. Some people point out that in the ancient world, saliva was widely used as a remedy for the treatment of boils, pains, sores, snake bites and eye diseases. Some attribute the use of saliva by Jesus to a Jewish belief that the saliva of a legitimate firstborn heir has healing properties for injuries or diseases. Some suggest that Jesus' spit signifies his words and clay represents humanity. Thus, Jesus mingled the spit with the clay to signify the mingling of humanity with the Lord's living word. Some say that Jesus' use of mud was meant to remind us of what we are made of. The Lord God formed the man from the clay of the ground. Likewise, Jesus showed his power as the creator by using the clay of the ground to give the blind man sight. Some others assume that Jesus deliberately broke the Sabbath law to test the Pharisees who regarded doing anything on the Sabbath, even molding mud or clay, a physical activity which went against the law, even if it is for healing. However, it is possible that each time, prompted by the Spirit, Jesus acted, regardless of the law. Perhaps Jesus wanted to show that he is above the law by saying that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Friends, whatever might have been the reason, the man obeyed Jesus' command without delay or hesitation. He went to the pool and washed his eyes and returned with his sight. Perhaps Jesus also wanted to make use of this miracle to show how important faith and obedience are in bringing healing or how God makes his co-workers in his healing or wanted to show how the blind man's own faith and obedience helped to bring about healing. Friends, the miracle was so great that his neighbors did not believe he could be the same man they had seen begging. But he told them that he was the same man and related the story of how it happened. He also humbly admitted to them that he did not know the healer, but that he was able to see because of him. They then brought him before the local religious authorities, not to get Jesus into trouble, but to spread the message of the wonderful thing that God had done. They recognized the healing as a miracle and Jesus as a man from God, but the Pharisees refused to acknowledge the miracle. They accused Jesus of being a sinner because he had healed the man on a Sabbath day. When they could not come to a consensus, they asked the man again what he thought of his healer. This time the man gave his healer the highest honor, that of a prophet. But that wasn't what the Pharisees wanted to hear. Dissatisfied with his answer, the Pharisees went on to interrogate his parents. His parents clarified that the man was indeed their son who had been born blind, but refused to answer as to how their son had gained his sight and who healed him. Ask him, he will speak for himself, they said. Yes, they failed to stand up courageously for Jesus or even to stand with their son for they were afraid of expulsion from their community. The authorities continued their hostile interrogation. They were not fair judges seeking truth. They had already reached a conclusion. Now they were seeking evidence so they could charge their enemy Jesus. They made all efforts to discourage the cured man and the other believers to spread the good act Jesus had done by saying that Jesus was a sinner. But the man with an unshakable faith, joy, trust, love, confidence, ease and courage said to them, I don't know if he is a sinner. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. Friends, he also strongly went against them saying that Jesus can't be a sinner because God does not listen to sinners. And if Jesus were not from God, he would not be able to perform this miracle. Friends, 
The story concludes with the man being thrown out of village and Jesus finding him in the temple. Jesus found him implies that Jesus was looking for him. The people had rejected the man, but at that very moment Jesus went looking for him to bring him to faith. He also revealed to the man that on judgment day those who are spiritually blind will not be saved, but those who can see will. That is to say, those who accept Jesus will be saved in the end. Those who say that they can see but are lying to themselves will still suffer from their unbelief in the end. Friends, this story has a number of lessons for us to learn. 1. The healing was a tangible proof for believing and accepting Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ. And yet, many people in Jesus' time chose to reject him. God still performs miracles every day, but most of them simply go unnoticed or denied. Some of us refuse to repent and believe even after we have seen many miracles. 2. Our sicknesses and afflictions are not necessarily the result of our sin. God himself may use them to shape us, to change us in a positive way, to cause spiritual growth, to redeem someone's life with our testimony, to test our faith in him and to draw us closer to him and others. However, we may be also suffering because of sin. So we should examine our lives. 3. Sometimes we fail to commit ourselves to Christ out of fear how others might react to it. We must consider our faith in God and his word seriously. And no matter how many foes we may have, we must not be afraid to stand up for Jesus and give him the honor due him, trusting that he will reward each of us according to our works. We must also speak up for those who can't speak for themselves and let everyone know that we are people of faith in Jesus Christ. 4. God does not ignore us. He knows our pain. He knows how much we need his help. He loves us too much to want us to see us suffer, especially for our faith. When we face ridicule, harassment and persecution for our faith, we must trust that God will take the initiative to reach out to us and redeem us. 5. We may be blind in many ways. Some of us do not have physical sight and some lack spiritual insight. But to move from spiritual blindness to sight, we must first of all admit that we are blind. And secondly, we must believe that Jesus alone has the power to open our blind eyes and restore our sight. Amen. God bless you.